Chair, why did the president wait until there was another shooting, until he addressed gun violence in America? Uh, he actually addressed it. We put out a statement in his name on the anniversary of um, uh, in early February, the anniversary of the of the shooting uh, in Florida. Um, so he has addressed it before, and I certainly has addressed it even as president, and will continue to address it as president. And as you know, Jeff, from covering covering him in Congress for a long time, this has been a passion of his, uh, putting in in place gun safety measures throughout his career. That's why he fought to uh, get the Brady Bill passed. Why he fought to uh, ban assault weapons. Why he was the lead in the Obama Biden administration and putting in place more than a dozen executive acts. Uh, to uh, to make uh, it safer for our communities, and it's something that he will continue to work on as president. Of course, he knows though, that the president's bully pulpit is unparalleled, and yet it took him until more than 60 days into his presidency to talk about gun violence on camera in America. What does that say about his commitment or how much political capital he's willing to spend on this issue? Well, I, I first would say that anybody who has been following um, the tragedies and the shootings that have happened in our country over the past several years, if not decades, knows that this is an issue the president is deeply committed to. And his, career, his uh, career is evidence of that. And I don't think anyone who's an advocate is looking at how many words he's spoken. They're looking at what his uh, background has been, where he has fought the fights. Uh, and he has fought the fights on the Brady Bill, on the assault weapons ban, on getting legislation passed. It wasn't successful, as was alluded to earlier in a question. Uh, we know that. Uh, but this is something he's going to put uh, his shoulder into. He's going to work with members of both parties. He's going to uh, certainly advocate for. And I think for uh, for those who have survived uh, gun violence, for those who have lost family members, they're really looking for action, and they're really looking at the record uh, that he has or he has over the course of the decades of his career. If I could follow up on the the question on the border, the access being granted uh, today for the pool is of a facility that is aspirational of where you want to move. Uh, these children. Mm -hmm. What about access to the facilities where there is overcrowding and there is an actual uh, uh, problem? Why was this one chosen over the? We're also open to providing access there, um, and we, this is just the first step in a process of providing greater access to the media. And when would that a decision be made? You've said earlier in this week that uh, you would be working on access. Is this the only access, or will that be coming? In no, the I would. Like I would consider it. It's, it's ongoing, and we wanted to provide. Um, pool coverage, as you all know, who are in the television uh, field of television, that allows for video a video camera to provide access to all the networks. We felt that would be a good first step, and we're looking forward to continuing to engage about how to provide increased access. Would you agree, though, that you've chosen the the facility that is uh, is the aspirational facility as opposed to the problem at this moment? Well, I, I would say we all agree that the the border patrol facilities are not places where children should be. They are. Um, children should be moving more quickly through those facilities. That is what our policy central focus is right now, as, as you know, Jeff. And there are also, it's also uh, becoming a public health concern uh, because of the number of kids who are moving through those facilities and the Why fact- why not show those to the well, American we, people? We, we will, and we are working with the Border Patrol and with uh, DHS to, to determine how we can do that. 